Hi, I'm Denise Gagne, creator of Music Play, and I'm here today to show you the um, online learning lessons for January week four, starting with pre-K. So pre-K lesson 19, I'm on the beta site, which has a, a little bit nicer layout than um, the classic site. So here's our concepts. There's no theme assigned, but as you can see, we, we really are focusing a lot on penguins at, at this time. So here's the outline for the lesson, the objectives. There's the worksheets available for you. You can tell it's a PDF because of that little symbol there. So we start by saying the echoes for it's music time. And then we review the finger play, roll the snowball, roll the snowball up, up, up. Good way for practicing up, down, uh, quiet, loud, fast, slow. And then we introduce Johnny Whoops. Kids love this finger play. Johnny, 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 whoops, Johnny, whoops, Johnny, 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 Johnny. And then you go through the class and you substitute the kids' names. Jason, 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 whoops, Jason, whoops, Jason, 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 Jason. And I asked Jason if he'd like his name fast or slow. He wants it fast. Jason, 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 whoops, Jason, whoops, Jason, 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 Jason. So you can ask fast, slow. You can ask loud, quiet. I've had some very clever little pre-K students say, I want it fast and quiet, or I want it loud and slow. Um, but it's a great activity. You sometimes forget that kindergarten children don't always know the names of everybody in their class. So this is a really good way for them to get a refresher on their classmates' names and practice all those concepts. Then we go on to the letter song of the week. This is the letter O, short uh, letter O says, ah, 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 ah. Short letter O says, ah, 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 like Ollie Otter. And Ollie Otter is very rude because he always eats with his mouth open. And nobody wanted to eat with them. So Ollie Otter learns to chew with his mouth closed and he gets better manners. And the song is Ollie Otter's mouth is open. Oh no. So the kids always like that and they get lots of oh practice with it. You can copy the movements in the video if you can't think up your own, but if you and the kids come up with your own, just skip that one. Um, we always offer optional uh, printing practice and if um, if the, the kids don't have a printer at home, just get them to practice O on a piece of paper and draw two things that they know starts with O. So it could be an otter or an ox or um, I don't know what my brain's not working. Then we're going to learn the song Frosty Weather and my voice doesn't work very well. So I'm going to let you hear it sung. And then my suggestion is to read the book, Millions of Snowflakes. This is the storybook, Millions of Snowflakes. And there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then an ending. But if you sing the Frosty Weather song after each section, it makes a nice musical interlude or addition to this storybook. One little snowflake falls on my nose. It makes me shiver from my head to my toes. Frosty weather, snowy weather, when the wind blows, we all go together. Two little snowflakes get in my eyes. Blink, blink, what a surprise. Frosty weather, snowy weather, when the wind blows, we all go together and then continue on like that. After five little snowflakes, you decide on the, um, the sections. There's some good movements in here. I laugh, perfect place for kids to add laughter. I jump, movement. I run, I spin. So this is a great storybook to add to your lesson. And I will make a video of the storybook, but it didn't get made in time for this presentation. Review the letter P from the previous week and review Perky Penguin 
and the Penguin March. The kids are really enjoying this and uh, the create movements for it. And then we end with our Skinnamarink song. So enjoy the pre-K lesson. You can always use pre-K with kindergarten as well. Kindergartens love these songs just as much as the pre-K. And I'm going to share with you today the kindergarten lesson for um, January week four. This is lesson 19 of our sequence. So I go into modules. Here's kindergarten lesson 19, concepts. There's no theme assigned, but the theme for this one probably would be Sleeping Beauty or Fairy Tales. Our objectives are supporting resources. You can see this is a PDF. If you don't have a storybook that tells the story of Sleeping Beauty, you can print this out and use it for the activity. We start with the echoes to welcome to music. If you're getting a little bit tired of this, a teacher in the Music Play Teachers group said that what she was doing with her students was clapping rhythms during the song and they would clap back. a little different way of doing the welcome song and it's good practice for the kids. The Button Factory chant is a fun chant. Kids have done it already so this is review for them um, but it's a great beat keeping activity. Echoing fruit rhythms. We haven't done this for a, a little while but apple, 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 plum. Kids echo and this is to help them realize that rhythm comes from language. Two sounds on a plate or two sounds on a beat or one sound on a beat and i do say tts and taws at the end but if you use do days and do's that's fine use whatever rhythm system you like then we learn the song pretty princess and it's a pretty little song that tells the story of sleeping And if you have a Sleeping Beauty storybook, you read the story, pause it, and stop and sing the verse that goes with it. Um, and if you're not totally sure how to do it, we actually have a video of it. So this is a seven minute video that tells the story that's in the PDF above and, and you sing back the verses. Um, it's kind of a nice idea to show this and then do it with the children and they sing the verses. Now we're gonna learn a song for 100 day. We're coming up to 100 day. Everybody starts at a little bit different time. So it's, uh, but it's coming. And so because this is a song that um, is not gonna be used beyond 100 day, uh, we made it an echo song. So it's easy for the children to, to learn. If you have ESL children, or you have children with language learning difficulties, echo songs are really helpful for them. Now, I have taken 10 pieces of colored paper and I've chopped them up in one inch lengths and I chopped an inch off. And now I can fold it up and I have a pom-pom that's made out of a hundred strips of paper. So we can do the song and we can create movement with our pom-poms and we're reinforcing what a hundred is because we've got a hundred pieces of paper in here. And literally all I did was I took 10 sheets of paper. Tissue paper would be better because it's lighter weight, but my eight and a half by 11 colored paper worked too. Um, I just took it to the, to the um, paper cutter and I cut up strips. You could give children um, 10 groups of 10 strips to put together and that would work too. But here is my pom-pom and then you create movement for the 100 for 100 song. Cheer for one hundred, cheer for one hundred. 
I'm not quite far enough back from the camera. But that's the cheer from 100 song, so it reinforces um, 100. We review who has the pencil. With kindergartens, you might want three guessers, three soloists. That way the game goes a lot quicker. And so we say, uh, the guesser closes eyes, someone on Zoom or in person, um, the teacher sings, who has the pencil? And whoever has it sings, I have the pencil. Who has the key? Who has the key? Book. Who has the ruler? Who has the ruler? Open now and look. Open now and look. So three guessers, three soloists makes the game go really quick. And pencil ruler book is something that everybody should have. And then we end with our skin and rink song. So a fun lesson for them. A lot of time will be spent making the pom poms for the cheer for 100. If you want to pre-make them, that's perfectly okay. If you don't have pom poms, you could use Kleenex. cheer for 100, cheer for 100, and that would work as well. And that would be a lot less work and time than making pom-poms from scratch. So have fun with lesson 19 for kindergarten and enjoy. I'm at the beta.musicplayonline.com website to look at the learning module for grade one, lesson 19. So if I select grade one, lesson 19, and I am at the Peter and the Wolf lesson. And this is the week where we have the full story. So here's the objectives. Here is PDFs. These worksheets are fabulous. Um, and I'll go through the ones that we have in this lesson. I've been asked for a cover so that students could make it into a full booklet and take that booklet home. And I will create that. So the first thing is to watch the story of Peter and the Wolf. And the full story is, um, this is a link to the Disney, but it doesn't work everywhere. So if this doesn't work for you, I'm sorry, I can do nothing about it. YouTube has blocked it from certain places. But we have a music play version of Peter and the Wolf, which is tell, still tells the story. It's just not quite as entertaining as the Disney version. We actually have an illustrator hired to redo all the illustrations of Peter and the Wolf, and I'm looking forward to that coming to Music Play. So the worksheets for this week are print the names of the instruments. That's what it looks like when it's printed out. Print the names of the instruments. And I've done printing practice um, so that grade one students don't have to be um, estimating spelling. And they actually learn how to correctly print the names of all those instruments. And then we have uh, a worksheet a line from the character to its instrument. So this is the cat, and the cat would go to the clarinet. Here's the grandfather. The grandfather would draw a line to the bassoon. So that's a nice little assessment to see if they can remember the themes. Um, another assessment that people have done for this lesson is to have the children act it out and dramatize the entire story. So that would be a fun activity to do as well. So that is lesson 19. The video of Peter and the Wolf does take 26 minutes to go through. So that's the bulk of your um, of your lesson. And the children have really enjoyed these Peter and the Wolf lessons. I hope your students have too. This is a grade two lesson 19 overview. This is week four of January's lesson. And as always in the lessons, we have concepts, themes, um, an outline here, our objectives as I can statements. If they're supporting resources, we include them. Um, this is a PDF, you can tell by that little PDF symbol, and this will be some rhythm flashcards. A teacher called and suggested that if you're getting tired of singing, welcome to music, that you clap rhythm patterns and do that while you listen to the recording. So we're going to listen and we're going to echo. So I'll clap, clap back. Do 
continue on. It's a bit tricky because it is a swing rhythm, um, but it's still a fun activity to do with it. Another thing that I've done um, to make this more interesting is to invite children to be the soloists at the beginning. And that gives you a good opportunity to hear and assess how well they're matching pitch. This, of course, only works on Zoom lessons right now, not necessarily in person. But when things get back to normal, hopefully next fall, uh, that's an idea to keep in mind. Now we have a wonderful video about sea shanties. One of our music play teachers suggested we try to get this video as part of our sea shanty lesson. And it's a wonderful, wonderful um, introduction. And Chris... Hi. You saw Today, you when we're sailing the boat, permission. we have all kinds of machines and winches and windlasses and other devices that help us sail the boat. 150 years ago, they had a different piece of technology called sea shells. I let my child go a-sailing, So it really demonstrates vividly for the children why sea shanties were sung. Um, and they're really popular right now. So this is a great lesson to be doing. You could do it certainly beyond grade two. You could do it with twos, threes, even fours. So then we do the sea shanty hall on the bow. Line. First time listen. And if you can, sing the response. So it's a fun song. Um, invite your students to create movements, things that they, they think they might do while they're, um, if they were on a sailing ship and using it. So fun activity, great song for grade twos. Um, all the verses are clean, unlike some sea shanties. So this one works. Then we're going to echo Domi So Patterns in key of C. And these are new Solfa Echo videos. Do, do, mi, so, so. And the kids would sing back. You listen, you sing right away. So, so, do. So, so, do. So listen. The little sign comes up here. Listen and then echo. Um, and then we do the song Pass the Stick. And I've suggested starting this time with actually learning to read the song first. Read the rhythms. T, 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 T. Ta or do day do day do day do whatever rhythms you use. So I will often start with the kids reading the rhythms, and then we've just echoed do me so. What's the first note of the song, boys and girls? It is a so. do the note names for the songs, do the solfa notes, and then have them sing the solfa. They can they can say the rhythm, they can sing the solfa. You don't have to teach every song by rote. This is a reading song, so get the kids to read it. So, so, me, me, do, do, do. And then we would go on uh, to watch the kids demo of how it's played. It's past the stick around the room. And then we give a recording for this. Pass the stick around the room. If it drops, you lose your turn. Or when we end this silly tune. So that's um, a new recording, new video, but again, good reading song. And we've given suggestions for ways that you can modify. So if I was doing this on a Zoom, I would probably do this in the same way that I did the game. Um, can you keep a steady beat? So child number one would say, pass the child number two, stick a next child round the room. When it if it drops, you lose your turn. Or when we end this silly tune. And the one who's on tune would be out and sit down. And then we continue it again. You can go faster. You can change direction um, until you have a winner. If I'm in person, I may or may not be able to sing, but I've got my flashlight. And I can have the kids stand in a circle and point to them with my flashlight. And the last one that gets pointed to sits down 
and is out. Um, some schools are being allowed to sing, lots of schools aren't. So you could simply say the words or if teacher's allowed to sing, teacher could sing it. But those are two ways of modifying the game. It's a good reading song, a good activity for your kids. And then to end, we've been doing all of January, we've been doing listening examples by Bach. We have a safe share link here to the video box fight for freedom. And this is uh, what I've done this with second graders. I've done it about 15 minutes at a time, not the whole video because it's too much for them. Uh, lots to take in, but it really is a lovely video. And if you're, um, if you have time to show it, absolutely show it. Okay. And this is an overview of grade three music lesson 19, the fourth week of January. I'm on the beta.musicplayonline.com website. This is our new version of the site. And I'm here to take you through the lesson. So the theme of this one is going to be shoes or Japanese instruments. You pick. Here's our objectives for supporting res uh, resources. We have a list of shoes for our shoe rondo, and we have a rhythm sort for the new shoes song. These are always optional. You don't have to use those if you don't. So first thing we're going to do is listen to the new shoes song. New shoes, new shoes, red and brown and black shoes. Tell me what did you choose if you could buy? So this is a guessing game <clears throat> where um, you choose three guessers and you choose three soloists and each of the guessers tries to guess. So if I give one student my music shoe that we would as a class sing, who has the music shoe? And the person who has it would sing, I have the music shoe. Of course, the guessers have their eyes closed and they have to try and guess who's got it. So you can do this on Zoom. You can choose three guessers and three people to have the shoes. If you are in person, if you can sing, you sing it. And it's a great way to assess pitch matching. If you're not allowed to sing, you say, who has the music shoe? I have the music shoe and you say it instead. So the game itself is fun. And if you do choose three guessers and three soloists, the game will go a little quicker than um, one at a time. Then we're going to create a rondo with different kinds of shoes. And it's most fun if you actually ask the kids to take off one of their shoes and give it to you. So I have music shoe, music shoe, I have tennis shoe, and I have a boot. So my rhythm composition would be music shoe, music shoe, tennis shoe, boot, music shoe, music shoe, tennis shoe, boot. And you choose what body percussion to play it on. You, um, you choose instruments that you could play it on. If you have the instrument kits, I could do my first three with my pool noodle scrapers and my last one with a stick. Music shoe, music shoe, running shoe, boot. And that's hard to play by yourself, but uh, that's where you would do it. Then you use your new shoes, new shoes as your theme. And my rhythm composition with my shoes as the A section. And if you have kids in, even in person, you can probably have two kids working together and then they have four shoes between them, or you give them the printable with different kinds of shoes. Sandal, moccasin, slipper, clog. And I really should add graphics to that because it would be easier for third graders if I had the pictures in there. There is an ORF arrangement of the song. So if you're in person and you're allowed to use your instruments, by all means, teach the ORF arrangement. And then you have a whole performance piece creating a rondo with new shoes. We have some interactive activities that are really good. This is a rhythm sort. Uh, so new shoes would be ta-ta. New shoes is going to be another ta-ta. Red and brown and black shoes. Tell me what would you choose if you could buy. So 
excellent interactive activity. And there is a printable version of that activity in the supporting resources. So you could use this as an assessment after you've done it with your class. We have Name the Solfa Notes, and it uses uh, Do, Re, Mi, So, La. So this is within the tone set that we want grade threes to learn. And this is a good activity as well. And then we have some review of our fun songs. Um, Meatballs and Spaghetti is the response to every one of these questions. It's a super fun song. Head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three. Head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three. Three, another singing game that the kids really like. If you're on Zoom, you be everybody's partner. If you're in person, same thing. Teacher is the partner to everybody. You play the recording instead of um, singing. And if you're allowed to sing, great. But here's the recording if you um, are not allowed to sing in your class. Then we do the song Sakura and at this point, we've done it for much of January, and the kids may be able to sing and move their fans to the music. This week's Japanese instrument is the shakuhachi, an end-blown flute, traditionally made from bamboo. Today, it may be made of wood or plastic. Um, it plays five holes, and we have its this is a picture of it performed in a festival. It came to Japan in the 7th century and was used in medieval times by Buddhist monks. It was popular in the Edo period. It was traditionally played only by men, but today many women play it. And we have a link to the video on the shakuhachi. So enjoy lesson 19, grade 3 with your students. We love to see pictures of your lessons and what things your students especially enjoyed in the Music Play Teachers group. Okay. This is an overview of grade four, lesson 19. This is for January week four, and I'm at beta.musicplayonline.com. This is our new website, and here is our grade four, lesson 19. There's always an introduction that explains things, our objectives given as I can statements. We have the note values for students to create their own basketball rhythms, but we've made you a very fun video this week for kids to do ball bouncing rhythms with. So that is a fun activity for the students. I've suggested this as an activity for the previous two weeks, but we've actually made it into a video now. But it's always fun to get kids to create their own. So take a piece of paper, fold it into four sections, and have them draw a whole note two half notes, four quarters, and eight eighths. Or if you want one that looks a lot nicer, you can print this from the supporting resources. And I suggest printing more than one because I, um, more than one page, because in many cases I used eight whole notes. Or the kids can just create their composition and write down how many times they want to use a whole note, how many times they want to use a half note. And we've given them two audio tracks to create their own. This one is a little bit lighter. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or this one. A little bit faster, not impossible. One, two, three, four. One, and if you've done um, the video with them, they'll have lots of different strategies. You can bounce to quarters, but it's easier to toss from hand to hand. By the time you get to eighth notes, for sure, tossing hand to hand is going to work better. So that's a great way to practice relative note values. Fun for the kids, get some creating. And now we're going to review the um, notes that we learned last time. If your students are at home, and they're able to play recorders at home, by all means, have them do the recorder unit. We've got animated recorder videos, we've got note highlight videos in the recorder unit. But if you don't have that option, 
we've got a virtual xylophone for you. And you'll have to teach your children how to split their screen. In this case, I've got two tabs. I just pull my virtual xylophone off to the side and then I pull this off to the other side and now I can play Just Be on my virtual xylophone. And I can use the number seven instead of tapping with the bars. B, 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 B. I find the numbers very responsive and really good. So keep that virtual xylophone um, up and ready. And then they practice just A, and then they practice A and B. And I am going to change this out because once I have the virtual xylophone up, then I could add the accompaniment tracks here and they could play along with the music. So I will switch that out. Um, just G and then G and A blues, sidestep and ending with Eau Claire de la Lune. So this is um, keeping the kids learning to read notes the same way they would on the recorder but with an alternative instrument for this crazy COVID year. Um, then I, I asked them to compose a new melody on B, A, and G. And level five is the level that they would choose for this. And you can drag from here to B. It flips the stem for me, so it's going in the correct direction. And then it will play it back for me. And I've given an example of a BAG com composition that I wrote, and I could play it on here. <laughs> I clicked on the wrong spot. Let me start that again. Uh, I messed up. I lost my xylophone. So, can't, oh, there's my xylophone back. Maybe I can do it. Okay. B, B, A, A, G, 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 A, A, B, A, G, B, A, B. So in person, I would accompany that with orf, orf instruments. I would accompany this composition with a G, D for Dune. Uh, let's see. And... Yeah, in, in reality, it works really well if you do this live. And then they can, again, play their composition on the virtual xylophone. So that's the grade four lesson for January week four. And we'll continue, hopefully, extending the student's reading ability in the next couple of lessons. I'm here to give you a quick overview of Grade 5, Lesson 19. We're continuing with the history of jazz theme in this lesson. We have our introduction here. We're going to review the blues. We have our objectives. The PDFs, the Lesson Guide Swing, gives you your answer key for the worksheet. And you can have the students complete the worksheet as a written activity or simply discuss the questions. And then the Lesson Guide is a guide to this entire lesson. So first thing to do is to view the cup game demo. If you haven't done this with your students, please do, because it's a really, really fun cup game. It starts bum, 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 pick, pass. In COVID times, we're going to go bum, 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 pick, set down. And then the B section was one the students created. So you can use their movements or you have students create their own. And we give an audio track of the piece. So if you have your kids create their own, do it without getting distracted by the visuals. This is a 12 bar blues movie that was done for another unit. And it's a good review of what we want students to know about the blues. So I included it in this week's lesson in grade five and in middle school. Now we're going to do the lesson on the swing era that comes from the history of jazz resource by Brad Keller and Bonnie Rossa. And there's the worksheet here. And again, I would go over the questions with the kids before showing them the video so they know what to listen for. And again, you can have them do it as a written assignment or simply discuss the questions. The listening assessment is based on the piece Sing, Sing, Sing with Benny Goodman and his orchestra. And here's a safe share link 
to it. Safe share links don't always work for anybody. So if the link doesn't work, Google Sing 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 Benny Goodman Orchestra and you'll find one that does work for you. So this um, video on the swing era starts with vocabulary, body of the lesson, and then review. And then you go on to answer the questions orally or have the students complete the worksheet. Um, I really love this Scooby-Doo song and it's a great opportunity to get your kids performing a piece in swing style. It's not enough to just learn about and listen to. This gives them a chance to do. So I start with my movement snapping. Very, very fun piece. There's four ostinato parts and you layer them. And if uh, I've had uh, third and fourth grade students successfully do this piece in four parts because it's written so well. Um, I have a performance of this piece by uh, Jen Forslund's class where she played it on ORF instruments instead of um, instead of singing it. And in COVID times, if you're in person and you're allowed to play, but you're not allowed to sing, that would be a great activity. I'll, uh, I have Jen's permission to add the video. So we'll be adding that video to this lesson so you can see it performed on um, xylophones. So this is the grade five and the middle school lesson. 19 for week four of January. It continues the study of the history of jazz. It's a great lesson. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> 